Video games are notorious for pulling people in, giving them something to hope for, and then pulling the rug out from under us. Many games are played for hours, building a one-of-a-kind character to the very end only to be ruined by an unsatisfying ending. The ending is debatably the most important part of any story, never mind a story the player had a hand in telling. So then why is it so often that the ending falls flat? Well, because of expectation. My name's Will, and I try to look at games and video game characters with a unique point of view. Firewatch may be a bit of an older title by today's standards, but it's still an excellent game with a divisive ending. As people, we have gained a love for the fanatical, the whimsical, those tales that make us feel something. Whether it's positive or a negative emotion comes second to the fact that we're feeling something to begin with. What also comes second is how we get to that feeling. What do I mean by this? How can we care more about how a story makes us feel over a logical and well put together ending? To understand that, we need to understand what escapism is. Escapism is a term coined to mean an outlet for someone to use to avoid the cruel truth that comes from reality. Literally found in the word, one attempts to use a story, a book, a video game as a way of escaping what's actually going on around them. But regardless of its flaws, life is logical. Most endings are predictable as humans evolved a strong trait of pattern recognition. Thousands of years ago, we had to learn that if 50 people coughed at once, it probably means that the plague is coming to town for a visit and not just some random coincidence. Actually, pattern recognition dictates more than most people expect. For example, you probably clicked on this video because you expected me to talk about Firewatch, or open up a dialogue regarding video games and the culture they've inspired. Maybe you came to this video just to disagree with me before I even said a word. Regardless, this all comes from the part of your brain that recognizes patterns and images, creates assumptions about what they will be, and uses those assumptions to create the emotions you feel emotions that are felt before experiencing the actual event. With that philosophical lesson behind us, what does that have to do with the endings in video games? Well, most endings fall flat because of two reasons. They either follow a logical conclusion that disappoints the players, not living up to the whimsical fairy tale the players created in their own minds, or they go too far in the opposite direction, removing any semblance of cohesion from their story just to have an attempt at shocking the player. Essentially, artificially introducing a wow factor that makes their game more memorable. What actually ends up happening is the player seeing through this false attempt and only remembering the game for trying a little bit too hard. But you know what isn't a fake attempt at trying to impress you? Me. I'm always this pretentious, and I try to look deeper into things more than any man should. And if that interests you, then you should press that subscribe button. According to my very real YouTube statistics, 417% of people who watch these videos aren't subscribed, and I didn't even think that was possible. Anyway, back to shitting on people's literal life's work. In all forms of media, endings have always been a hard thing to master. From Game of Thrones to anything made by Bethesda, it isn't uncommon for players to be disappointed with how their favorite projects of media end. But I don't think the same thing can actually be said for Firewatch. Firewatch is a game where a man goes off to be a fire watcher, I know, clever, right? For a forest over a summer. The footage you are seeing is from Nils Christensen, so please feel free to go check him out on YouTube. A man who lost his wife due to early onset dementia, we play as Henry, the main protagonist who tries to use his newly acquired job as a way of escaping from his problems. As the game progresses, you meet Delilah, your fellow fire watcher in another tower, who teaches you the ins and outs of being a fire watcher. You only communicate with her over a radio, which creates a disconnect between the two parties. Players feel like they have a narrator guiding them rather than a fellow person. A comparison that I think is appropriate is the Stanley Parable game. A game where a silent protagonist goes about one of the strangest days of his life at his workplace, while a narrator describes his actions and provides context for the player as the game goes along. While Delilah isn't some fourth wall breaking narrator who is there to toy with the player, she plays the same role as you never get to see her in the game. For all we know, she could have been a hallucination in our character's head. This is obviously not true, but it speaks to the fact that Delilah never feels like anything more than just a voice. Throughout the game, a fire breaks out. Kids are caught skinny dipping in the forest, and Delilah alongside our player character create a conspiracy theory about a man who is watching them, or maybe a government agency that is tracking their every move. There's a bit more nuance to the story than that, but it's pretty much the gist of it. Everyone universally agrees that the ending of the game fell flat, yet here I am trying to defend it. Why? Because it's what we deserved. That sounded harsh, but it's true. Firewatch ends the way the story should have. Delilah gets airlifted out of her watchtower due to the growing concern that the twin fire will burn down the whole forest, and our character is seen being airlifted out as well shortly after having one more conversation with Delilah over the radio. The players feel cheated. Like if the conflict resolution was purposely left out to mess with them. But the reality is, there was never any reason for us to get a more elaborate ending. Players feel a strong connection to Delilah due to the summer spent talking to her over the radio. 
the mystery that they solved of the man who stayed camping out in the woods because of the loss of his son, the abandoned government campsite that looks to be involved in some serious operations, and the case of the missing naked swimmers. It's no wonder the player feels bonded to her by this point. But you've never actually met, and Delilah has no reason to wait for you at the end of the game, especially with the fire growing so rapidly. We as players felt robbed of an ending that wasn't in the cards for any of the characters in the game. The story ended how this would end in real life. The two probably went on to live their own lives and this is just a distant memory to them of a summer they once had many years ago. The game spit on the idea of escapism and reminded us that life isn't fantastical. It isn't some whimsical adventure that we get to explore. There is no happy ending where everything works out for all the characters involved. It's logical, cold, and unforgiving. Firewatch used the buildup it created throughout the game to remind the players that there is no escape from reality. It always follows you, showing its ugly head in every aspect of our lives, no matter how hard we try to run away. I mean, think about what you actually did in the game that was so fantastic. The conspiracy ended up being the story of a broken man who misses his son and can't face the reality that he's gone. Living in the forest is his form of escapism, but even he knows that this won't last forever. He knows that his son is gone no matter how hard he tries to push past that fact. The girls that were skinny dipping end up going missing. Another opportunity for whimsy, another chance for the story to escalate and become this showtime drama. But instead, the developers changed the story later on, saying that they were found later and returned home safely. At every turn, Firewatch gives you hope that something deeper is going on, and then reminds you that life doesn't work that way. And while for many that seems like a shitty way to end your game, I loved it. So many games try to do something special with their ending, with many more failing in the process. One of my favorite games of all time, Pathologic, has three convoluted endings that only get more complicated the deeper you dig. Shit, there may even be more that I'm not aware of. I love that game, but the mental trauma I suffered playing it is something I never plan on doing again. Pathologic had nothing to prove and shows you a story that is cruel as it is horrifying. The tale of a town destined to be burned down, killed by the plague, or blown up by their own military. However, when you look closer at the fine print, the backrooms of the game's psyche, we see the web of intricate lies the game told the player the whole time. Pathologic is unapologetically confusing and convoluted. It knows that the endings are wild, something no sane person could have ever come up with, and it embraces that fact wholeheartedly. It's why I enjoyed the game and any discussions around it so much. But Firewatch is different. It doesn't lie to the player. It only lets you believe what you want and then reminds you of the truth of the matter. Firewatch is a reminder to all of us that sometimes an ending can be just that. The end of the story. A conclusion that fits the story it's attached to. Some call this boring. I call it another approach to storytelling. So in the end, can I recommend you this game? Is it something that's worth putting so many hours into only for you to be left with this feeling of disappointment? Ultimately, Yes, Firewatch is an eight-year-old classic game that uses storytelling techniques perfectly to engage the player while also building up plot points that are very nicely executed in future segments. Just being a part of the game makes it worth the money and you can easily pick it up on sale for like $3. Do me a favor, go to your Steam page, wishlist the game, and give it a shot when you're ready for an experience you won't ever forget about. The game is quite old at this point and I still think that it lives up to this recommendation. That's just one man's opinion. I thoroughly enjoyed talking about another classic game that made me fall in love with video games as a whole. If you enjoyed, let me know what other topics or games you'd like for me to discuss. Also, expect a video on Pathologic 2 coming out in the near future. It's quite a large project and it's something that I want to do right and for that I need time to perfect it. But that's all from me folks. I'll see you all later.